If you know anyone who's gotten truly rich in the stock market in a relatively short period of time, they probably got very lucky and invested in some very small company and it shot up and then they got rich. Like had you put $10,000 into Seleno Therapeutics one year ago, that $10,000 would be $178,900 today just one year later. Investing in a company before they get too big is risky, but also has the most chance of the highest returns. Just five years ago, Nvidia was trading for under $50 per share, and today it's up to almost $900. $10,000 in Nvidia back then would be around $180,000 today. So the upside is obvious, but the risk on these bad boys is insane. Most of these smaller companies just don't make it. So if you did invest a couple thousand dollars into a lesser known company, your money doesn't just have the risk of going down 10 or 20%, you literally risk losing all of that money. The way to hedge that risk a little bit is to not just invest in individual small cap companies, but to invest in an ETF full of a bunch of different ones so you don't have to be the best stock picker in the world to make some money. In a fund of a couple hundred or thousand different companies, there are bound to be a couple winners in there. Also, most of you already invest in stocks or ETFs that are large cap. Companies like Microsoft, Apple, Tesla, Disney, and Nvidia are all large cap. ETFs like VU that track the S&P 500 and QQQ that track the NASDAQ 100 are ETFs that only have large cap stocks within them. So in order to diversify fully, adding in some small cap exposure might be a very smart move for your portfolio. After doing a bunch of research, this is the list of the top four ETFs that are small cap that I really, really like, and I'm gonna explain how you should invest in this within your portfolio. Like how much percentage of your portfolio should be in something like small cap. My name is Nolan Govea, my students call me Professor G, and I made this channel to make investing simplified. A small cap stock is generally that of a company with a market capitalization of between $300 million and $2 billion. Small cap stock investors seek to beat institutional investors by focusing on growth opportunities. Small cap stocks historically have outperformed large cap stocks, but are also more volatile and riskier. These outperform because for a company that's huge, like Microsoft, we as investors are super excited if it grows as much as it did in the last year when it grew about 46%. But small cap stocks are the ones growing 1,789% or 1,309% in one year, which is obviously a massive difference. The first small cap ETF on this list is called SCHA, and this is the Schwab US Small Cap ETF. This one tracks the total return of the Dow Jones US Small Cap Total Stock Market Index. It has an expense ratio of 0.04%, which is actually very low for a small cap fund. The fund inception date was 2009, so it's been around for a while. It has 1,728 total holdings. The PE ratio is 16.22, which is solid. SCHA has a current price of almost $47 per share, and year to date, it's pretty flat at barely under 0% for the year. Over the last 10 years, on average per year, it's appreciating at about 7.78%. The top holdings in this ETF are companies like MicroStrategy, Nutanix, Comfort Systems USA, and Wingstop. Side note, the garlic parmesan wings at Wingstop are fire. The sector balance in this ETF is very balanced with the top sectors being industrials, financials, and healthcare. So these companies are very, very small compared to that of the S&P 500. And that's kind of the point. In theory, investing in companies when they're smaller gives the investor all the profit because if they become big enough to then be able to get into the S&P 500, by that point, they will have profited a bunch, and then us as investors will have profited alongside with them. The next one on my list is actually an international small cap ETF, because I get a lot of questions on this channel as to how I can diversify my portfolio, not just in large cap versus small cap, but also outside the United States, if that's something that you're interested in. Here's a quick disclaimer. The return, especially over the last 10 years, is not gonna look great. For those of you that understand investing though, understand that it's not really the best time to be buying an ETF or stock when it does look amazing, because then that means that it's at its highest. We do wanna look for ETFs that might be down just a bit or a bit over some time, because eventually and hopefully this ETF will rise and you will have bought it down at the bottom. 
So this fund is a fund full of companies in emerging markets. So not only are the companies small in the fund, but also the market in which the company is in is up and coming and not yet fully developed. These would be countries like Taiwan, Brazil, India, and Mexico. There's a lot of potential growth here as they try to catch up with that of the United States. This ETF is ticker symbol EEMS, and this is the iShares MSCI Emerging Markets Small Cap ETF. This one has an expense ratio of 0.7%, which is on the higher side and is typical of both small cap and international style funds. The fund inception date was 2011. The total holdings in this ETF is 1,616. PE ratio is 15.33, which is solid. The current price for EEMS is $58.66, and year to date, it's up 2.59%. Over the last 10 years, it's had an average appreciation of 4.63%, percent per year which is definitely not great but we don't only want to buy ETFs that have been doing amazing there's much value in these ones that have not yet peaked now the top holdings in this fund are understandably a lot of companies that I haven't heard of but what I do like to see is the weight of these companies are all very low so it's a much more balanced type fund if this type of fund interests you make sure you look up at least the top 20 companies and understand what they do so you can understand what you're investing in. The sectors for EEMS are very balanced here too with industrials, information technology, and materials rounding out the top three. So I included this one as a little bonus for those of you that are looking for not only small cap but also international. This ETF was one of the best in both categories. Now the next ETF on this list is one of the strongest with definitely the biggest return over the last five years by far out of any of the other ones on this list. But first I wanna thank and introduce the sponsor of this video, Delete Me. Did you know that your personal data is sold online by data brokers? You have the right to stay private and protect your personal data. Last year I was hacked on Instagram and through email and even going through the process of reaching out to Instagram and Facebook HQ, they couldn't do anything about it. So I lost my profile, all my pictures from the last 10 years, and just peace of mind in general. Since some of my businesses are here on YouTube and online in general, this is huge for me. Delete Me is a hands-free subscription service that will remove your personal information that's being sold online. Delete Me's privacy experts remove your personal information, like phone number, address, and other private info from hundreds of data brokers all year long, and you get a privacy report in seven days. I really like that customers can make custom removal requests. I also like that this company is headquartered here in the United States, which gives me extra peace of mind. We all do a lot online, especially things like investing and bank stuff, so it's just a smart move to have an extra layer of protection. Get 20% off Delete Me US consumer plans when you go to the link down in my description, which is joindeleteme.com slash professor and use code professor at checkout and then let me know how you like this service. Now the third ETF on this list is the Pacer US Small Cap Cash Cows 100 ETF, CAF or C-A-L-F, which tracks the Pacer US Small Cap Cash Cows index. This this index selects small cap companies that have high free cash flow yields, which is a measure of how much cash a company generates relative to its market value. The idea is that companies with strong cash flows can invest in growth, pay dividends, or buy back shares. This ETF has been the best performer among the four, with a total return of 126% in the past five years before taxes and assuming reinvestment of dividends. This also beats the performance of the S&P 500 index, which returned 107%. This one is very cool because of the actual strategy it uses and invests with. The ability to generate a high free cash flow yield indicates a company is producing more cash than it needs to run the business and can invest in growth opportunities. So if this ETF is intending to invest in those types of companies, the idea would be that those companies can grow faster than most other companies, which means that we're gonna profit more as investors. It does have five stars on Morningstar, which is reputable, and the expense ratio is 0.5%. 59%. The inception date was 2017 and that's moderately new, so keep your eye on that. But over the past five years, this ETF has appreciated an average of almost 17.5% each year. This year so far it's down about 2.7%, so it's on a bit of a sale at the current price of $46.63. The top holdings of this fund are CVR Energy, Andersons Inc., American Eagle, and Xerox in the top 10 companies in this fund. 
The sectors for CALF are heavy in consumer discretionary and also industrials, energy, and information technology. This one has a very intriguing why behind their investment thesis, so definitely take a look at this one. And the last one on my list is one that's probably the most famous in this category of small cap. After I go over this one, I'll go over exactly how I'd actually invest in these type of funds and how you can put them into your portfolio that you already have going now. The fourth and final ETF is the Vanguard Small Cap Value Index Fund, VBR, which follows the CRSP US Small Cap Value Index. This index selects small cap companies that have low valuations, such as low price to earnings ratios, price to book ratios, and price to cash flow ratios. VBR has an expense ratio of 0.07%. The fund inception was 2004. It has 855 total holdings. The PE ratio is 13.7, which is incredibly low. VBR has a current price of $181.45, and year to date, it's up about 1%. As far as its 10 year return, this one is one of the highest in the group at almost 9% per year on average. The top holdings in this fund are Builders First Source, Booz Allen Hamilton Holdings, and Reliance Steel and Aluminum, among others. The sectors for this ETF are heavy in industrials, financials, and consumer discretionary, but has a good mix of them all. The dividend on this one is not too shabby either at 2%, so that's a fun little bonus. Out of all the ones that I went over, this one's the most broad and foundational, as it covers almost everything, and this is just your basic vanilla small cap ETF. Now, as far as how to invest in these, I'd suggest using a smaller portion of your portfolio if this is even something that you feel like you want to add in to your portfolio. For beginners and even intermediate investors, sticking to that three fund portfolio that I go over multiple times in many different videos on this channel is most likely gonna be your best bet. You're gonna get the best returns while keeping your risk very, very low, and it's super stress-free. In the overarching three categories that your portfolio is likely broken up into, small cap funds are much closer to that of something like the growth style funds because they're higher risk, but possibly much higher reward. So if you were looking at your portfolio and you were thinking you wanted to have about 40% in the foundation or the S&P 500, then you'd have about 30% or so in a dividend style fund like SCHD or VYM. Then if you were going to put 30% in that last category, the higher risk, higher reward, so something like growth funds, at this point you might have something like QQQM or VGT or something in that category. So if you wanted to add in some small cap, something like CAF or VBR, if you wanted to put that into your portfolio, you'd stick that into the growth area. So if 30% of your portfolio is there, you'd have to sell out of some VGT or QQQM, and then you can put in some CAF or VBR or one of the other ones. Everyone should invest based off of his or her investing strategy and risk profile. So be sure to keep watching my videos to learn what yours might be. To learn more about how that three fund portfolio works now, specifically in 2024 with an updated version, watch this video now. And to check out more amazing ETFs that all beat the S&P 500, Check out this video and let me know which one is the one that you're thinking about adding.